and women in blue, I pledge to be your advocate and your voice every day. When I first got into this race, I did so to bring focus to the public safety challenge of our lifetime, the drug crisis. And there is so much work to be done to fight this epidemic. I am humbled to have this endorsement and as a chief law enforcement officer in Kentucky, I will work every day to make our community safer and our families and cities, citizens more secure. When he received the endorsement of the FOP, one of the most racist organizations that exist in America. I got time today. And half of that statement was a lie. Daniel Cameron is not here to protect citizens and to make the state of Kentucky safer. Say that. But he was honest about one part, and that is that he is an advocate for police yeah. and that he was going to be their voice and to do whatever is necessary to protect them. And so we learned that he stood, he's a man of his word as it relates to his relationship to police. He protected the police. And it did not matter to him one bit that those same officers could have ran in his mama, his black mama's wow. house, wow. and shot her to death. Wow. He's more committed to the white supremacy wow. that he is upholding. He mentioned at the press conference, which I thought was quite interesting, that he's a black man. Wow. And as I laid and cried, and hurt for Tamika Palmer and for Breonna Taylor and for Kenny Walker and for Janaya, who we need to love up on. As I lay there and I thought about him saying he's a black man, I thought about the ships that went into Fort Monroe and Jamestown with our people on them over 400 years ago and how there were also black men on those ships that were responsible for bringing our people over here. Daniel Cameron is no different than the sellout Negroes that sold our people into slavery and helped white men to capture our people, to abuse them and to traffic them while our women were raped, while our men were raped by savages. That is who you are, Daniel Cameron. You are a coward, you are a sellout, and you were used by the system to harm your own mama, your own black mama. We have no respect for you. No respect for your black skin. Because all of our skin folk ain't our kin folk. And you do not belong to black people at all. We learned that on the same exact day that this announcement came out, it was the day that in September of, I forget the year, 1955, 65, no, 1955, which was 65 years ago, Emmett Till was also killed again, denied justice, because the two white officers responsible for, the two white men, excuse me, responsible for killing him were let free. That happened on the same day. Now, I don't know if it's just that Daniel Cameron is stupid or that he is very, very, very clear about history and made a decision to wait six months and come forward with this announcement, this garbage that we received on the exact same day that Emmett Till's family received the same result. And the historic. But I want you to understand how wicked he is. How wicked he is. And how wicked this system is. Attorney Sam Aguilar, and I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I got to say it. Y'all know I, I push the envelope too far all the time. <laughs> Attorney Sam Aguilar 
said he spoke to the attorney general's office and told them, do not have Tamika Palmer come all the way to Frankfurt, which is an hour drive away, to hear bad news and have to drive back. Do not do that to her. You can call on the telephone to tell her bad news. And that wicked man called for her to come there anyway and had this black mama to have to drive home with her sister and her family after hearing that they didn't even mention her daughter's name in the damn indictment process in this grand jury hearing. How dare you? What kind of man are you? How dare you? And we are not going home. We will make sure that this city is as uncomfortable as it can be. And we intend, and we intend to travel across the state of Kentucky and make sure that in every corner of this state they know who you are, Daniel Cameron, and who is upholding the system of white supremacy that continues to oppress our people. The last thing we will say is, Mayor Fisher, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Do not think for one moment that you're going to hide behind a settlement or hide behind reform that we are happy to see that you actually support it, but it must be implemented, and we have to make sure that that work is done. But the main thing that matters at this point, you can have the National Guard, the Army, the white militia, the whoever you want to have here, LMPD, whoever you want to have, anybody, turn them loose, tell them, turn them loose, but until you fire those cops, until your investigation returns the results that the police officers who murdered, they said they were mad at me for using the language murder, I said what I said, they murdered Breonna Taylor, and until officers are fired from this department, I promise you, I promise you, we will continue to make these streets hot. Now, and today at 5 o'clock, just for anybody who's wondering when to meet us, we're going to be outside. We're going to be outside. The last thing I want to tell you all is that I, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a visitor, so I, I observe. And our team, we, we, we don't live here permanently, but we temporarily live here. And we observe a lot. So last night as we broke curfew, because that's what we do. That's what we do. Every night. And we prepare for whatever that means. We drove around and we noticed that there were some other people breaking curfew. Uh -oh. There were some other people breaking curfew. And we, and we were coming, we were rushing from a meeting to try to get to a church that is being a, a place of sanctuary for protesters so that they can be inside, because that's what y'all said y'all wanted us to do, was to be inside. Is Am I right about that? And so these folks were on their way to go inside and to disrespect the state Representative Attica Scott, yes, Shamika Parrish, who is a leader in this community, and say, and other women, other black women, and other individuals, and to say that they were actually burning down something, as Attorney Lanita Baker says, it is despicable. It's despicable, and you are liars. But as I was riding around, and we saw all these people in one place at a Shell gas station that is not far from here. Jefferson and First. Jefferson and First. Jefferson and First. Baders. I was looking, and I said, I said, wait, we got to stop, because is that the police? Is it the military? No. It was the white militia. And it was after 9 o'clock, and they were breaking curfew with me. So what I want to know is, is it okay for us to even be at a church? Yeah. And them, they can be outside, but we can't be at a church. I thought Mayor Fisher said that he wanted the churches and the mosque and other places to open up. Why were they arrested last night, and yet the white militia was allowed to be outside after 9 o'clock? Because they said, listen, Louisville residents, I want you to be clear about what they said. They said that the, the owner of the Shell gas station 
the owner of the Shell gas station, had the white militia on their property to protect them. So they're telling you who they with. So if you continue to go to the Shell gas station as a person, a black person in this city, or any person who claims to support our cause, you ain't, you ain't, you got it twisted. Boycott Baiters immediately. We have no reason to go back to that gas station since they are standing with the white militia. And it's on First and Jefferson. First and Jefferson. And they shot some, right, and one of their white employees shot a black man down there the other day. And ironically, they put out video of some people in the store throwing things down on the ground afterwards, but they never showed that the reason why that even happened was because a black man was shot there and they held the man who shot him inside the store for two hours to protect him. And the question I have for the media is, where is that story? Why is it that people don't know a black man was shot at a shell station and the white militia is being allowed to stand outside there and protect them? So I'm, I'm done. But I want to tell you that what has actually happened is that one Breonna Taylor has brought us together. And we will never be separated. And number two, we are prepared to fight until our own death, if it is necessary.